The second type of vector we're going to look at is called a position vector. A position vector always joins the origin to another point and it's always directed away from the origin. In the diagram here you can see clearly that we have the position vector that joins O to A and we can label it using capital letters so we put O A and then we put an arrow above them and the arrows running from O to A. That's telling us the direction of the position vector. It's always directed away from the origin, from O to A in this case. If we wanted to get the position vector in component form, the easiest way to do it is just look at the coordinates of the other point, point A. The X coordinate here tells you what the I component is and the Y coordinate of point A will tell you what the J component is. So the position vector OA is 13I plus 8J. Okay, so let's look at an example. So our example says that point A has the coordinates minus 2, minus 8. Write down the position vector. Well, really easy. To get the position vector of point A, you just look at the coordinates of point A and the X coordinate tells you what the I component is. So the I component is going to be minus 2. So we've got minus 2I. And then the Y coordinate of point A tells you what the J component of the position vector is. So the J component is going to be negative 8J. So really, really straightforward. So that is the position vector of point A. In other words, we could say that OA, the position vector from O to A, is equal to minus 2i minus 8j. Okay. okay, part B then asks us to work out the distance that point A is from the origin. So I would always draw a sketch in this situation before we work out any distances. So again, rule your I and J axes. put the origin on it. So we're going to plot the point minus 2 minus 8. So minus 2 minus 8 is going to be somewhere down there. And then join the origin to point A. And remember it's a position vector that we're drawing here, so it's always directed away from the origin. So the tail here we're putting in the origin, and the nose is where point A is. Now, we want to get the distance that point A is from the origin. So in other words, we want the length of this vector. So we want the length of OA. Now, up here we have the vector OA in component form. So remember, to get the length, it's just the square root of the I component squared plus the J component squared. So that's going to give us minus 2 squared is 4, minus 8 squared is 64, 4 plus 64 is going to give us 68, so we've got the square root of 68. Again, you could simplify the third. The largest square number to go into 68 is 4, so you can write that as 4 multiplied by 17. And then you can use surge rules to break it up. So that would be root 4 times root 17, which would give you 2 root 17. Okay. Or, if we went to the calculator and typed in the square root of 68, that would give us 8.2462. Units. So our final answer 
distance from O to A is 2 root 17 or 8.25 units to 3SF. Okay, so all we're really doing in that example is in part A just writing down what the position vector is in component form. So you get that directly from the coordinates of A and write it down in component form. And then when you're asked to find the distance that point A is from the origin, it's a good idea to draw a sketch and then put the position vector in. And then all you're doing is finding the length of the position vector. So you're using the formula for the length, which is the square root of the I component all squared plus the J component all squared. So that's how position vectors work. The final thing is a displacement vector. A displacement vector always joins two points, but neither of them is the origin. And it's directed between the two points. So you can see here that this is the displacement vector that joins point A to point B. Note that neither of these points are the origin. And again, we can label the vector using capital letters, so A, B, and then we have the arrow going from A to B, because if you look at the vector, that's the direction that the vector is moving from A to B. So that's what a displacement vector looks like.